Hello again, and welcome back to another video. Today, I thought we'd do something slightly different, actually. I thought instead of doing a sort of simple tutorial like we normally do, I thought I'd just do some talking, basically. I thought I'd do some talking about sound design as a whole, in general, where we can talk about different ideas and methods that you can use for when you're doing sound design yourself, or if you're a game developer and you're implementing audio, or if you're just you know, a programmer who wants to learn a little bit about sound design. I thought I'd do that. I think it would be quite nice to kind of speak about it as a whole, you know, in general. Uh, so that's what we're doing today. So I'd really appreciate any feedback you guys have. That would mean a lot, because obviously this is something I haven't done before. Uh, and yeah, let's start off with artistic cohesion. That's the topic for today. Now, what do I mean by artistic cohesion, you might ask? Well, what I mean by that is basically when designing art or sound, uh, you want it all to kind of connect together uh, and enforce any ideas or themes that the game is trying to portray, or even gameplay for that matter. Uh, so it's really important that when designing sounds or implementing sounds, we bear this in mind. We want the sound to not only, not only enforce the art and the game and what's going on, but we want it to kind of make sense with any other sounds we add, you know. We all want it to kind of fit nicely. It's basically what I'm referring to, uh, which is obviously very important. Uh, we don't want our sound to sound a bit off and, you know, distract the player from the game. We, we don't want it to sort of clash stylistically, I suppose. So it's quite important that we bear this in mind when we're, you know, adding audio to our game. So take a look at this game I'm showing you right now. This is called Super Time Force Ultra. Great game, by the way. Uh, and it clearly consists of 2D pixel art, right? That's cool. Uh, but now imagine you've just played this game or you've just got to the end of a level and you've encountered a boss. Now imagine that that boss uh, looks like they've just been pulled straight out of GTA 5, where they've got fluid animation, they're in 3D, and they look like essentially uh, a human, right? That would completely throw you off. That wouldn't make any sense. That would clash stylistically, and that would rip you right out of the experience. So that's kind of what I mean. Uh, by artistic cohesion, we want everything to fit and match quite nicely. Uh, we don't want anything to essentially break the player's immersion. I've actually set up some examples that demonstrate how we want to kind of be thinking about artistic cohesion uh, when putting sounds to our game. And the first is using this game, Super Time Force Ultra. Let's start off by taking a listen to this gun sound. Now hopefully you will listen to that and thought, that sounded really weird. That's good because it is weird. That wasn't the actual gun sounds from the game, I replaced them myself. Uh, let's have a quick listen to how the gun should sound. So the sounds they actually use for these gunshots are a lot more sort of colourful, they're higher pitch and a lot less sort of low heavy like the ones I use. The sounds I use were actually kind of designed more so for not necessarily a realistic gunshot, or, but certainly not a sort of pixel arty one. Uh, so this is why the sounds they use obviously works a lot better. Uh, it fits well with the kind of action-y sort of 2D bright pixel art that they're going for. So it, again, it enforces the rest of the style of the game. Now here's another example for you. Imagine you're playing Left 4 Dead and instead of hearing this sound whenever the player lands on the ground, you were to hear this sound from Cuphead whenever the enemies land on the ground. Now essentially, these sounds serve the exact same purpose. Whenever we hear an entity land on the ground, we're gonna hear a FUD or we're gonna expect a FUD. But obviously where Cuphead's got that kind of cartoony 1910s to 1930s old school kind of art style, uh, if we were to swap the sounds, it definitely would not fit within Left 4 Dead, where everything's a bit more gritty and a bit darker, you know, and it takes itself a lot more seriously. So again, this is another way of talking about artistic cohesion. We want our sounds to match the world around us, essentially. Now, if you're working on a game and you're doing the sounds or you've got someone else on the team doing the sounds, then artistic cohesion shouldn't be too much of an issue for you, or at least you shouldn't run into any issues involving artistic cohesion, mainly because all the sounds that you design and implement will be designed specifically for this game. Uh, so it shouldn't come naturally. It is still worth bearing in mind. I mean, if you're making a game and you really take the care to kind of make your sounds fit with what's going on on screen, uh, that can elevate the sort of audio as a whole from just sort of average and just, yeah, sounds okay, to, you know, being something really special, being something that people remember. 
the main reason to look out for artistic cohesion or to at least bear it in mind is when using sort of third party external sound libraries that you can get online. That's not to say they're bad, they're actually really good some of those uh, sample libraries. Uh, but because the sounds on there were just, you know, sounds made for the sake of making sounds and for others to use, they weren't designed with anything specific in mind. Uh, so that means they can clash with potentially with anything else going on in your game. Uh, if you're getting, or if you need assets, uh, using the Unity Asset Store or going to asoundeffect.com, those places are really great. Uh, not only because you can listen to the sounds and get a feel for, you know, how they sound, also because they've got a really you know in-depth description for anyone who's not too into sound design which is great because it tells you about reverb and you know distortion or panning effects you know even it tells you i'm pretty sure uh, on a sound it tells you about the sample and the bit rate which is also very important so these are going to be really helpful for pulling these sounds you want to know as much as possible as you can essentially uh because you're like i said you want to bear this in mind for when implementing them into your game so I'm going to stick a link in the description to both of those sample libraries, uh, but I'm also going to stick a link in the description uh, to a video uh, that's on Jim Sterling's channel where he looks at a game called Art of Stealth. Now he looks at a lot of games that are just not very good, you know, they've clearly just been put on Steam to make a quick buck. But this one in particular is a really good example of what happens when you don't take artistic cohesion into consideration. Because the game's an absolute mess. There's one point in particular where you collect coins. Uh, and it's so the sounds associated with it, it sounds like you've just completed Super Mario Galaxy, which is weird because you're playing this really, you know, this stealthy dark game. Why am I hearing sort of chirpy bit tune kind of music? It, you know, it's a great way of seeing that, you know, this can be an issue if you don't think about it. And with that, I think that's everything I wanted to talk about in this episode. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, feel free to let me know how this went. If this sucked, please just slam that in the comments and, you know, make sure I know because <laughs> I want to make these better. I've got a few more ideas for these kind of videos. Uh, again, where I talk about sort of general ideas within sound design and essentially how you can make your game sound better. Uh, and I want to make sure that these work and these are, you know, constructive videos. So please let me know if this was good or bad. Uh, honestly, you know, use whatever language. Well, maybe not any language, but <laughs> let me know essentially. Feel free to let me know. One more thing I'd like you guys to add in the comments. If you know of any great sample libraries online that you like to use uh, quite a bit, please get them in the comments, not just for myself, but for uh, anyone else who's maybe doesn't use them too much uh, or doesn't know where to start. Uh, I think it'd be really nice if we kind of, you know, pull together and see what's out there. Because um, some of them are really naff, you know, some of them you get just some terrible sounds for really horrible prices. Uh, so yeah, if you've got a minute, that'd be great. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter, at HenryScott0, uh, if you want to hear me talk about sound design or share any articles relevant to sound design. Um, yeah, and I think that's everything. So, if you need to watch any of my FMOD, Unity, or Sound Design tutorials, uh, I'm sure you know where to find them. I've been Henry Scott, and thank you very much for watching.